George Washington had a lot of leeway in developing his branch, selecting his four principal officers and grouping them all into an advisory board called the cabinet. None of it specified by, but all of it within the bounds of, the Constitution. Going forward, the executive branch continued this basic framework established by Washington, but a later president came along to influence how that framework would be staffed. Andrew Jackson entered the presidency as an enthusiastic supporter of patronage, also known as the spoils system. This system held that those who adamantly supported the president's election and his party were given appointments to political office throughout all levels of government as a reward for their loyalty. As to whether these people had any qualifications or even desire to do a good job, well, that didn't matter. Of course, the agreement included the appointees paying part of their salary to the political party enabling them. Because what use is investing in corruption if you don't get some of your money back? 